those watching. Hi everybody, welcome to the Pre-Law Shadowers and today we are here with Suresh who's going to tell us about his experience in the law field as a lawyer. Um, if you are watching the pre uh, this recorded video already, thank you again for taking the time out of your day to watch this. We hope that you learned something from today's session. So hi Suresh, welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this for us today and talk to us about your experience within the law field. Um, if you want to start off by just telling us how you got into law and the schools that you went through and your beginning process of why you ended up here. Well, thank you, Christina, for having me on. Really appreciate it. Um, um, I am a business and technology, technology lawyer. I attended the Osgoode Hall Law School and also the University of Ottawa. I started my first year at the University of Ottawa Law School and then transferred and graduated from Osgoode Hall Law School. Uh, before I did my law degrees, I have a background in engineering. I have an engineering degree and an arts degree from the University of Waterloo. And I also have an MBA from Wilfrid Laurier University. So my background, as you can imagine, is in engineering and business, entrepreneurship. And uh, from there, I transitioned into law. But um, my practice area still goes back to focusing on primarily on business and technology. So it's a nice little niche. And... I'm able to uh, leverage all my previous experience to cater to the needs of uh, entrepreneurs primarily, but also other professionals. Great. Did you know that you wanted to end up going to law school or was this something that you found out during your um, post-secondary and your undergraduate? Uh, to be honest, I never dreamt that I would become a lawyer. Uh, my, you know, from my young age, I always, uh, Told, uh, you know, I always thought that I was going to become an engineer. I had an uncle who was a mechanical engineer. So from, I think, the age of eight or nine, I thought I'm going to be like him when I grow up and be a mechanical engineer. And from there, my passion changed to computer and electronics. So I went into electrical engineering. And, you know, but then in, in life, you go through different experiences and you, work, you grow and you, you, you get exposed to different things and your interests change. You know, that, uh, that's how life is, right? You, we change careers the same way we can change... Uh, of professions and what we study and the same. So it, that, it, it's in that manner that I ended up going down the law school path, but it took a few years of uh, contemplating. Uh, you know, I, I think I went through three years of contemplating whether I should pursue a career in law uh, before making that decision. So I did my research, I did speak to people, I did think about it a lot before mm -hmm. making that transition because I, I knew the time commitment and how much you will deviate from the field of technology. So I, I gave it a lot of thought before doing that. Mm -hmm. Great. What do you, like, so I've never talked to anybody who's done um, technology law. What does your day-to-day -day consist of? Like, how do you, what type of cases do you get? And if you can tell us a little bit about that. <clears throat> yeah. So I'll talk about the business law side and the technology law side. So on the business law side, I'm helping people primarily to start their business or so, uh, incorporating their business and then doing all kinds of like shareholder agreements and organizing their uh, corporation once it's incorporated, like having a minute book set up and other, how, what kind of shares do you want to distribute and all that kind of things, like organizing it. Uh, then when the business is growing, you need to get into different contracts or so whether it's contracts with vendors, uh, employment contracts with the employees you're hiring or contractors you're hiring. So all that type of contract work, I'm also involved in that. Uh, then on the, you know, so there's a lot more that goes on. And then when the company is trying to raise capital, when they're trying to raise money, how do you allocate the shares and doing that transaction or, or, or selling the business? If somebody's trying to buy or sell a business, I'm involved in that transaction as well. Uh, then on the technology side, if you look at it, there's a, uh, you know, every business nowadays have a technology presence, online presence. So, um, you know, all of that, like terms of uh, terms of uh, terms and conditions and privacy statements and all those type of things are uh, I'm uh, often involved in helping them draft them. And also the software technology companies that uh, hire me to on an ongoing basis, oftentimes to uh, basically work on contracts for them. So they'll be licensing out there technology to other companies to use. So all that licensing uh, uh, is done by lawyers, it's basically specialized type of contract. Given that I have a background in technology and business, it, I'm able to appreciate what, what, uh, what intellectual property they're trying to protect because uh, 
if these agreements are not drafted ca carefully, there could be issues with the intellectual property that they own. So I work and assist with those matters as well. Wow, yeah, that's that's quite the day. I mean, I can't even imagine. It's just contract after contract every day. <laughs> Um, so you yeah, said, that, uh, yeah. <laughs> so you said that you worked um, with bigger companies and technological companies. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? And I'm referring specifically to your prior work with Amazon and companies like BlackBerry. And if you want to talk a little bit about that. Okay, sure. Yeah. So in my life prior to entering into law, I'm still uh, to a large extent. Um, I'm, you know, my I worked. I started off by, you know, in high school time, even starting my own business to doing web development, and then worked for companies like IBM and Xerox. I even traveled to the Caribbean to Dominica to work for Cable and Wireless. So all of that was primarily in uh, web-related technology. Then when I went to the University of Waterloo to do engineering, the Waterloo Engineering has a co-op program. So through the co-op program, I was the uh, fortunate enough to travel to the U.S. for the most part to work for Microsoft and Amazon and NVIDIA and then locally at BlackBerry. So there I started off in software field and then tried some hardware jobs and then went into project management. So project management is where I spend most of my work, uh, work terms in. Then during that time, I also did another business uh, for refurbishing and exporting computers for to third world countries to so developing nations. So that business was also something I, I was passionate about. So then from there on, when I did the MBA, I started more uh, doing consulting work, management consulting work for technology companies. Uh, and then more recently, I've been involved in business role, executive positions at technology media companies where um, you know, I've been uh, leading initiative to transform the company in a different direction. And I was also involved in mergers and acquisitions. So I worked for an um, uh, ethnic media company where I led the sale of the company to a larger media outlet. So, so a lot of M&A experience and also transforming uh, businesses and you know, business leadership. So it's good to have, I think, all that business experience, hands-on experience, but also the academic side to be able to appreciate what challenges and what needs the businesses have when I'm we're giving them advice as a service provider because as a lawyer we're a service provider and the more you can relate to the challenges they have or what they're trying to accomplish the better you will be able to provide the services that they require right so mm -hmm. i think given my unique ex experience i'm able to relate to them a lot better yeah it makes a lot of sense i mean that's that's really that's really great to hear because I'm like I'm sure there's not many people who think that there that you can go into law through a technological side because I've never heard that but like, I've only heard the criminal law, the Highway Traffic Act, things like that. So it's really cool to see this type of perspective. Um, is there like something that you would say to 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 the law students right now who are either doing their degree in like engineering or technology or something like that? what type of advice do you think that you would give to kids who are like kind of confused, who don't really know if they want to pursue this or not? So, you know, uh, the, the field of law is very broad and, uh, um, you know, you don't, uh, it's, uh, and, but there are some common themes in terms of the heavy reading, the heavy drafting, you know, so the reading and writing is a core, you know, you, and regardless of any area of law you're picking, there's a lot of that for sure. Right. <laughs> so depending on whether you come from an arts background, engineering background, or any background is what type, you know, are you interested in that type of work in the legal field? And also then secondly, what area of law? So, you know, naturally somebody coming from an engineering background, if you're coming into law, you would get pigeonholed into thinking that you should do intellectual property law, so that trademark patent, because that's kind of a natural fit. Uh, but it doesn't mean that you should do that. I, I, you know, I know people coming from an engineering background who go into criminal law, and myself, I'm now involved more on the business law side. You know, more business work than technology law work, right? So it all depends on what is your passion and interest. But of course, if you have, if you're coming from an engineering background, you had a strong foundation in engineering then you'll make an awesome IP lawyer. But it doesn't mean that if you have interest in something else, you, can, you cannot pursue. So it all depends on <clears throat> what is your passion, what is your interest, and uh, do you know, have you done your research to know what a uh, career in law will look like given how you want to uh, 
you know, how you want to create your own path uh, and what type of work will be involved to get there because it's a lot of uh, hard work, a lot of sacrifice, and uh, it's a lot of time also, right? Like the time, money, and the opportunity cost that you have, you have to balance everything and weigh everything and see whether this is something you want to pursue. Mm -hmm. That's really great advice. Thank you for that. Um, I just want to ask, because I know that you've said you've done a lot before deciding that you wanted to, to be where you're at right now. So I was wondering how exactly did you end up where you are in terms of being a lawyer? Because like you said, you've done a lot prior. Um, you've done, you've done so much with startup companies and being in different types of positions. So how did you end up specifically the way that you are today? So I, I think, you know, if you asked me like 10 years ago, or even when I was applying to law school, uh, or even when I was graduating from law school, if, if I would be practicing on my own, or if I would be doing the, exactly the way I am doing, yeah, I would say probably not, uh, because, you know, your, your plans change as you kind of go further into the process and you look at, look at you reassess the, the situation based on where, where you're at, right? And what's happening around you, right? Uh, so in my case, I, I, I got my license last year and oh, wow. right in the middle of the pandemic. So, you know, you're right in the middle of pandemic. Okay, is this what's going on around you? And is it a good time to go try to work at a firm or even at a boutique firm or try to start something on your own? And I, you know, it's a process. I always, you know, coming from an engineering background, I appreciate a uh, process. Everything takes, you know, has a process, right? So I do my homework. I speak to people to get advice. So I spoke to different mentors uh, to see, hey, what are the different options, to explore the different options and what's best for me. And I made the decision that given everything that's going, happening around me and also where I am in life, given my, my, my age and my family commitments and my unique experience and skills, because normally, uh, you know, if you, if you are younger and you're straight coming from, you know, graduating from law school and, uh, it's, it, and it's probably good to work at a firm for a few years to get the experience and skills to, before you go on on your own. But given that uh, the experiences that I have, which is unique, given, you know, on the business and technology side, uh, I think there's a lot I could, I, I realized and that my mentors were telling me that, you know, there's a lot of uh, value that you can provide and it doesn't make sense for you where you are in your career uh, to, uh, to work at a firm and start from there. I think you have enough to start on your own and we would support you. So I still rely on, even though I'm on my own, I rely on a network of mentors. So, you know, there's one mentor I speak to every early morning, 7 a.m. on a Saturday or Sunday. So he's a partner at a large firm and he would call me while he's doing his walk. So I rely on a dozen mentors on a regular basis, depending on the file that I'm working on and they guide me through it. And this is how they, you know, how they advise me, given where you are, it makes sense for you to start on your own and we will give you the support you need. Uh, and uh, given, and it's also the current need with the pandemic, there's a need for uh, legal service uh, services and uh, my approach is more like entrepreneurial and technology based and um, uh, trying to deliver these services by enabling technology and so on and uh, it can be done on your own is what uh, the advice I got so I just jumped right in and started my practice uh, I think two weeks after getting my license wow. <laughs> uh, so it's it, so you know so you know it wasn't it wasn't the exact plan game plan but I just went with the flow and made the decision and it's been it's been a busy six months so far uh because if, if i had time to plan out exactly i would have done a lot more things this is kind of you get thrown in the deep end and you're figuring things out and uh, but and that's why i appreciate also the support i'm getting and if you follow me on my social media on linkedin and so on instagram and facebook you'll see that i'm also posting a lot of content and i'm posting that content primarily because I appreciate the support I received and the guidance I received. So I'm trying to share any information I can with the general public and also with other, other students and so on so that they can learn from it as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's quite the life. I mean, what has life been like compared, like, you know, we're in a pandemic right now. So, so many things have changed. What has your life been like before and now? in terms of the pandemic and how things have changed? 
to be honest, it's the ability, like the you know, the on uh, more than like a professional on the personal side, even on the professional side, not being able, not being able to interact with people in face to face has been a challenge, right? Because when you're in person, you're able to uh, more easily uh, understand what the need of the clients are, or understand what they need, and then provide that. You know, you can communicate better and doing things remotely makes it more challenging, right? Uh, for sure, but we're adapting and we're doing the best we can given the situation. But on a personal level also, uh, you know, where, when you're not able to meet with family members and you, you have two young children at home uh, uh, who, who are, uh, you know, stuck inside for, the, for a lot of time and uh, it's difficult on everybody in the family, right? So, but you do the best you can. Uh, and, uh, you know, and that's why I posted a video recently to, to, that talks about that we will get through this soon and to have hope because, you know, it's human nature, we, we deal with challenges, but we overcome challenges. And this pandemic is a huge challenge that we are all dealing with and it's affecting us in one way or another. Everybody's struggling with it in, with one, in one way or another, but just like everything else in the past, we will get through this and things will get back to normal or things may change, uh, you know, uh, slightly, but we will get through it as we have done in the past. But when you're going through it, it will always be painful. So I'm always trying to remind myself that, hey, you know, there's a lot of challenges that I have personally gone through in life or together we have gone through. We will get through this. So you just don't give up and you just deal with this problem and you do the best you can. So I think it's part of that pandemic that caused me to start my practice and to set it up in a way that's more technology enabled and so on. And uh, to be honest, it's working out for, well for me. I've been able to, even even though it's a short period of time, I have served, you know, consulted close to 100 uh, clients uh, who are mostly entrepreneurs. So it's been busy six months and setting up my tools, setting up my 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 processes have been have been overwhelming. But uh, it's been uh, it's been good good challenge to deal with. Wow! Thank you and congratulations on starting your own business. That's such such a struggle i think and it's such a big thing and it's there's so much that goes into it that i don't think a lot of people like to talk about um so i don't know if you want to go into kind of how you ended up starting your business why you did it and what has been a struggle what's been somewhat easy and just the entire process of actually being a business owner yeah thank you uh i think there's been a lot of struggles because you have to figure out how to do everything from the beginning right mm -hmm. uh but you know my my approach was asking questions i'm not shy to reach out to other lawyers to other uh, colleagues to ask how they have done things to get their help even though it's not always easy but i i've been fortunate enough to have the network to count on but it's still not easy because when you when you're starting up everything from you know, setting up the business. Do you want to do it under your own name, a separate corporation? What name are you going to use? Uh, how? And a big thing for law, law firms is uh, how to do our bookkeeping and record keeping because that's all very important. So, learning how what are the best practices, and so you read up on it, but you speak with other lawyers as well to and mentors to see what are the best practices to properly record, do your record keeping. And with all this remote uh, work as well how could you make sure that your practice is set up properly so that you don't, you know, you're doing everything properly. Uh, and then also, so that part of it. And then it, for me uniquely, uh, you know, trying to see how I can leverage my background and passion. Because one thing I should say is that I'm still very much interested in technology and I'm trying to see how I can infuse technology into the practice of law through hopefully building some legal technology solutions. So I'm trying to, infuse that into my own practice to see how can I do the intake process better using the using uh, forms or how can I do cons online consultation so how can I make my practice more technology friendly so all that has been challenging because uh, uh, you know it's not something people have done in the past since uh, a lot given that there wasn't the same kind of need as we have now with the pandemic so uh, it's been uh, and then then uh, also you know from the client uh, side of it you know how do you communicate with the client and how do you get the word out that you're offering legal services and how do you get the word out in the proper way to explain what are the areas you're providing services because sometimes clients will be calling uh, uh, with different things that you don't practice so you have to explain that you know, I don't do every area of law is only the few so kind of managing those expectations uh, managing your time because uh, it's 
tough for me. Even now, I, I, I struggle with it where there's only so many hours in the day and you'll get phone calls throughout the day. You'll get emails throughout the day and people message through on social media. Then you also have to do work. <laughs> so how do you manage and how do you get the support you need and how do you manage the client's expectation that no, you sometimes you cannot just call me and expect the work will be done today because there's other files on my plate. So, mm. you know, but it, it all comes down to communication and you grow and you learn. So I'm still going through that learning to figure out how to say, you know, how to explain and manage those expectations on when things will be delivered and how it will be delivered and putting things in writing so that the both parties have understanding and so on. So, mm-hmm. so all that is challenging, but it's a good challenge because you learn quickly. When you're starting your own practice, it may be, you may be nervous and you may be overwhelmed, but you learn quickly. Like I feel like I've been at this for six years, even though it's been six months so far <laughs> <laughs> uh, because of the learning, right? So it's good for you. Good. Yeah, that's great. That's, that's a really good thing to hear. And it's, like it's very candid in the sense that it's good that we as students should know that this is not going to be easy this is like there's so much work that goes into it there's so many different aspects that go into being a business owner on top of you know doing the work of a lawyer so it's great to hear that very candidly thank you um and i and i think there will be more sorry just to add to that i mm -hmm. think there'll be more and more of the lawyers will be starting on their own even right from the beginning because you can imagine like the current state of things is like you know there's shortage of articling jobs for everybody there's right. shortage of position open position so it's not easy out there right so and the need is also there so there will be a lot more mm -hmm. uh, lawyers who are going to try to start on their own and and you don't have to start you know trying to take on everything right so you can start small and build up to in, in the area that you want to practice But mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I, you know, I think it's a growing trend. There will be more and more lawyers starting on their own. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's just going to be how things are going to be. Mm -hmm. Is there like advice or something that you would say to a student who's thinking about it? Or even like to someone who's, you know, towards their upper years of their law school? Um, is there something that you would want to tell them in terms of their business startup and whether or not this would be a good idea for them now that you're saying that like there is a demand for for some new law firms so you're, you're talking about whether they should start a law firm on their own right yeah 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 so i think it it, it comes down to the individual and what their situation is uh and uh, which path they want to take take right so uh, uh the traditional thinking has been trying to work at a firm or uh, Or, or uh, you know, or other uh, government, governmental and non-governmental agencies to get the experience. And I think that's great to, you know, it, there's a lot of learning, you know, in law school, we learn so much, but then a lot more learning, go, a lot of learning goes on at, at work too, right? So it, 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 it's great if you can work with the, under another lawyer and learn uh, for a few years, right? Uh, but if your situation is that uh, you want to start on your own, uh, or you don't, you know, that's something you, you, you feel comfortable doing. It comes down to the individual, right? And mm -hmm. it's the ability to practice on your own, the ability to learn on your own, and also reach out to other people as help is needed, but also the ability to bring business too, right? Mm -hmm. Because you got you to gotta bring clients too when you're doing your own practice, right? right? But all of that being said, even if you're working at a firm or anywhere else right now, a, more, a lot of places you're seeing that, you know, the lawyers are involved in trying to bring clients themselves. And, and uh, it's not that somebody they are teaching you like in a classroom setting, the mo most of the work happens on your own. You, you have access to other lawyers to go and ask for help, but you have access to, you know, you can have the uh, freedom to maybe practice in a, a area and then not worry about the administrative task or not worry about bringing clients all the time so you can focus more on the lawyering uh, compared to what I have to deal with uh, mm -hmm. but still you you're gonna have to do a little bit of everything uh, regardless of where you work so it's just the, the balance of you know when you're on your own you got to do a bit of everything whereas if you're working at a firm you can do more lawyering and less right. of the other thing but it, right. things are changing everywhere right whether you're at a firm or on your own So there's no, e you know, there's no easy way one way or another. It's all going to be 
mm-hmm. hard work and it's, it's going to require a multidisciplinary approach and that's why you see law school programs also starting to change because they realize that lawyers need to have financial literacy lawyers need to have technology skills because it's part of the new practice way mm-hmm. right so you need to have the multidisciplinary approach to lawyering uh, nowadays right yeah very true very true i think that's like that's something that i myself have thought about too is whether or not like i should be taking business courses or business classes if i do plan on creating my own business um so that's that's great to hear in the sense that like it's not like you know if you were to go to a law firm then specifically like you would be doing the lawyering for the most part compared to if you were starting your own firm then you would have to be able to kind of i guess do everything all at the same time um yeah. Is there something that you like the most about the field or something that you dislike if there is anything and if you want to touch on it a little bit? Yeah, um, I think what I what I like the most about it is uh, the reason why I came into the field, which is to be able to help people. So whether it's entrepreneurs and or individuals, other individuals who have a, a legal problem that you're helping them with, then it's, you know, it's, uh, it, it's not always... Uh, something that they're struggling with sometimes it's good problems right like how they how do you grow the business and how can you help with that so it's very satisfying to be able to be part of that growth or to be able to deal with the with that problem or the the issue that they have um and the learning because every time you're learning on on how to do something different because every time even though it may be the same type of transaction uh, you, you'll come you'll end up learning something new because of some detail or the way you you learn about the business from the client or so on, right? So mm-hmm. there's a lot of learning that goes on uh, uh, because, you know, compare that to my engineering work in the past, you're working on one project and you're deep into that one project for a few months. So you're learning everything about that project. But here in the legal practice, you've got a hundred clients. So it's, it's almost like a doctor is seeing different patients, right? So you're dealing with hundred different problems at once. So you're you're learning a lot more on different levels and not just from the legal side. So uh, your perspective on life just, you know, it just expands. Mm-hmm. So that's good. Now on the, on, the, on the flip side, that's also the challenge because now you got to be able to manage uh, uh, the expectation that I mentioned before, but you got to be able to manage the needs of 100 different people, but maybe not all at once, but maybe 10 or 20 at once. That's still a lot. Uh, compared to having one project in like engineering right. work where you're dealing with here, you have multiple clients and they all have the issues and you got to be able to communicate to keep them up to date with what work is being done. And from a project management point of view, so my project management experience comes in very handy in law because every client, every file is a project. If you consider it that way, then you got yeah. two dozen or a dozen files to manage at the same time. And right. how do you allocate your time what are the different priorities, uh, you know, time timelines that you have to do, and if you have other staff that you're working with, how do you manage that? On um, who's working on what task and having visibility into that? How do you manage what visibility the client has on what's happening on your file? Mm-hmm. So all of these are very interesting, and I'm I'm trying to see what tools are available or what can be leveraged or built to be able to do that better, to improve that client communication or the team communication within the practice of law. But, uh, you know, where there's challenges, there's opportunities, right? So yeah, this is an example of true. that. Very true, yeah, for sure. Um, is there one piece of advice that you would give to your younger self or is there something that you would tell your younger self in the sense of like, don't do this or don't do that? Uh, younger self, um, you know, just to be, uh, you know, more open-minded because I think uh, at my younger age, I thought, you know, engineering and, you know, I, whether it's sports, you know, I did track and field and I ran long distance and I ran at the national level in the Canadian Junior Olympics. At uh, the same way in the studies, I, I narrowed myself that to think that I'm going to be an engineer from my told at a very young age. So everything about what I was doing was engineering related. Mm-hmm. But today I'm a lawyer, right? So you, you never know where life will take you and how things will change. So to have an open mind, to work hard like I think from a young age I always worked hard I, I lived my life but I also worked hard I was very focused I'm a very driven person but having that open mind and going with the flow a little bit helps you uh, so I, I think if you know if that's what I would give myself the advice to have an open mind because you know maybe in high school I would have taken a law course yeah. and 
yeah. things like that rather than taking all math and sciences <laughs> you know what i mean yeah but you know in my university days i started to see that you know my life is going to my interests are changing so that's why i was taking courses in like all kinds of areas right mm-hmm. first politics religion uh, everything just to understand humanity better anthropology like everything right so yeah. i think some of it you grow you know when you're 20 you do different things when you're 40 you do other things so like your thinking evolves and uh, um, so that's part of how we grow up right yeah very true that's really good advice I think that's so true because because like like as students we are kind of told from such a such a young age to pick something and then essentially to like go through with it and, and if you don't go through with it then you've seen like you're seen as someone who quote-unquote failed um in the field that they wanted to do so that's really good advice and that's really comforting to hear as a student because I mean like we all go through and we all are learning and it's all just a journey yeah and 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 also to like making mistakes like you know you know at a younger age you make mistakes we make mistakes all the time but uh you know you you take responsibility you know Mm -hmm. on one side to be mindful that where you know our actions have consequences right like that right. can be lifelong and that right. can affect your reputation for lifelong so sometimes where you know if I, if I have to give advice to my younger self like some of the things I would have done would, would you know would have an impact on me for lifelong right mm-hmm. uh, so to go back and you know if I could go back to be give the advice to be mindful of how it's going to change your whole life right but on the other side everybody will make mistakes throughout their lives. So when you make mistakes, try not to make the same mistake at least again and own up to it and see how you can change and grow from it, right? And in my in my case, that's what it's been. Like I, I made some significant mistakes in my younger days and I just, uh, and I, you know, I just looked at how I can rebuild my life, how I can own up to that and change, change uh, accordingly. But uh, it takes up a lot of energy. It does have a toll on you. It does have a toll on everybody around you, but that, that's part of who we are, right? We, 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 we don't, you know, we don't, we're, we go through different stages in life and we go through different experiences, right? Mm-hmm. And what happens around us also has an impact on us. So right. you just have to accept and, and live with it and do the best you can and to be contributing member to society and to make the most of your life so that life is not wasted, right? Right. That's great advice, honestly. That's, yeah. I have no comments after that. That was really good advice. <laughs> um no, you're welcome. thank you one of my next questions is just what type of both professional or personal skills do you think that someone would have in order to be successful in their field uh, I think uh, uh, that's a good question and uh, uh, you know being honest honesty is important uh, and uh, candor like being honest candor and uh, being open uh, mm-hmm. because uh, if you if, if when you're dealing with people, because most, most of what we do, skills we can gain uh, as by learning, but uh, it, it's our personality and how we deal with other people that matters to a greater, like, greater extent. Mm-hmm. Uh, so paying attention to that, like when you're interacting with other people, if they can trust you, if they under- see you as a genuine person and you're a respectful person and you communicate openly and you share ideas, you're respectful those kind of traits will take you a long way and people will be supportive of you in your journeys and being positive, like, you know, trying as much as possible being positive, right? Like regardless of the challenges that life throws at you, if you're somebody who's always being productive and who's taking a positive approach to life, uh, other people will be attracted to that energy too, right? And they'll be wanting to be part of your journey to be supportive. And, uh, you know, being like, especially my personality, I always need people around me to be part of my journey. So it's very important that uh, that communication and the social life to be able to keep moving and doing things right. So mm-hmm. I think working on those type of things where you rather than being alone and trying to figure things out on your own, communicating, getting support from others, whether you're building a business or whether you're learning something, uh, the more you interact with others and getting them to be a part of your journey. It will give you the motive because sometimes it's not hard you you feel like giving up right so we feel like going on a different path so when you have other people kind of pushing you too it'll help you stay the course right and it'll give you more reasons more energy to keep moving forward so i think having those skills or that those personalities 
of building relationships, focusing on building relationships. I know now, you know, with the, with the pandemic and just being limited to social media, it becomes challenging, but we do the best we can. But focusing on building relationships that last with people is important, uh, mm -hmm. whether it's on the personal level or at the professional level. And everything takes time, right? Whether it's with the family members or with the colleagues, uh, with clients, everything takes time to build those lasting relationships, but you got to cultivate them. Right. And that's it. Right. That's, that's great advice. And I mean, this entire uh, organization is kind of put, pushing students to be able to to work on their communication skills to be able to work on their the networking skills that they don't think that they have because i mean like that's what our field is about right it's just about making those connections and being able to talk to people and being able to present yourself in a professional enough manner that people will trust you with essentially like their life their business you know so that's really great advice um, one of my next questions is, is there some type of advice that you would give specifically to, to law students and to, it, like, it, it could be anything. I know you kind of touched upon a bunch of different things, but if, but is there one kind of thing that you would want someone to know from just talking to you today? Yeah, I think um, explore the different areas that you want to practice and try to learn explore the areas and part of that exploration and learning, try to learn in a broad way. So you will learn, the learning doesn't just come from the classroom books. So you learn from other peers, you learn from interacting with the professors outside of the classroom. You also learn by taking part in other extracurricular activities. There will be different clubs and activities that go on at the law school. So taking part in those, uh, like, you know, different clinics, they have, the, every law school has different clinics that you can take part in volunteer. Uh, so those type of activities also enhance your learning. And if you can volunteer somewhere uh, or do a summer job, you're learning more, right? So mm -hmm. kind of having an open mind to learning about the field of law when you're in law school and not just focusing on what's being given, assigned to you as assignment or, or preparing for exams. Because I find a lot of students are focused on getting the high grades, which is important, and they're focusing on the, the course material, but you got to, I, I think it's important to augment that and try to enhance the learning by getting a, a, involved in the school and in the community as you're going through the law school, uh, because that will be more enriching for your experience, mm -hmm. overall learning. Mm -hmm. That's good advice. Thank you. Um, I hope you're everybody welcome. who's watching that and who's going to watch that will take that into consideration if they're confused and if they just don't really know if it's something that they truly want in their life um it's so great to hear honestly because I know like for myself like I switched my majors too um so I ended up in the law life um after I had taken a year of psychology um but I was like you know this is not this is not my passion this isn't something that I think I'm going to pursue um, so that's great advice to know that like it's okay if you don't necessarily know and it's okay to be open. Um, and I think there's such like a such the misconception that if we change paths, it's like it's a bad thing. Um, so that's great to hear. Thank you very much for that. Um, is there anything else that you would like to say to anybody or just to 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 future students, to future lawyers, kids who are in law school? It could be, it could be really anything. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, I can share a little bit more about uh, applying to law school and that process. Yeah. And I, I was actually going to post a video sure. on applying to law school tips today. Uh, so, you know, you can watch that too later when I post on LinkedIn. But, uh, uh, you know, one thing is to keep in mind what it takes to apply. So, you know, focusing on your grades. And it doesn't matter what program you're in. You can be studying engineering, you can be studying arts, you can be studying music, science. It doesn't matter what university you're from, what program you're studying but trying to get that high grade is important uh, and then number two is uh, focusing on to uh, write the LSAT uh, when you when you're writing the LSAT uh, making sure that uh, you, you you're spending enough time to prepare for you know about four months or so to properly study and not to be studying the whole day making time to look after yourself but being focused when you're studying right I think it's important that exam is an exam of focus testing your ability to focus. So when you're sitting to study for four or five hours to be able to focus and then 
you know, snapping out of it and going to your normal life afterwards, right? Rather than trying to do 12 hours of focused studying, which doesn't work, right? right. Uh, and then putting together the application. So everybody, a lot of people know they need the high grade, they know they need the LSAT, but sometimes people don't put in enough time on the application or the exploration by speaking to the law school. So in my case, I applied widely to a lot of law school programs. And I also went to visit a lot of the law schools to speak with students and professors and other lawyers. So those kind of things are helpful. And when you're working on the application, take it like your resume, you know, put time, get other people to give you feedback and uh, tailor it to every university you're applying to and uh, really work hard on that application package as much as or more than you do when you're doing your LSAT preparation, right? So right. it's a similar thing when you're applying for jobs, you know, you spend the time on the resume, you spend the time for the interview, same way with the time for the package as well, mm-hmm. in addition. Right. Um, so I know you said, I, I believe it is that you ended up going to, to Osgood, right? Unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, so first, uh, I started my first year law school at Ottawa. So oh, after my first year, yeah, after my first year at Ottawa, I transferred to Oxford to be closer to my family, to okay. my wife. Okay. Yeah. Was there, like, did you have a process when you were picking the law school that you wanted to go to, or was it all kind of generally the same? But to be honest, uh, you have to, uh, you know, it's important to realize that the process of applying to law school is very competitive in Ontario and in Canada given the number of limited number of spots that are available and that's why i say you have to apply widely you know i think i applied to 13 law schools across the country out of 16 uh, but i took the time and put the money to apply to each one because you know they all great schools in canada right regardless of uh, which one you get in so uh, uh, but if you have options that's great but the often time is which law school picks you that it comes down to, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't know how the system is now, but back when I applied, uh, you know, you could only have one offer at a time in Ontario. So if you have, if you get an offer from one university, you accept it. If you reject it, you have to reject it to get another one. But things may have changed now, but that's how it works. So you can really have multiple offers in the same pro in Ontario back then. Things may be different now, but you know, they are all great schools and. Uh, uh, but it, it's tough. It, it may be difficult uh, for most of us to say that I want to go to that particular school for the particular reason. And mm-hmm. then if you apply too narrowly, you may be disappointed if you don't get in, right? Because it's not about you, but it's also more so about the number of limited spots. It's about 10%, less than 10% chance of admission to any, any mm-hmm. of the schools when I was applying. 9% was the actual number because there's so many people who are applying for so little spots. So how could you be so sure that you'll get into that particular school? So it's, it's best to apply widely and keep your options open uh, and know that wherever you, you get in and go would be already a, a great opportunity, right? That most people, 90% of the people, applicants are not getting, right? Yeah. Uh, so, so that's the way to think, right? Like, you know, if you really want it, uh, then you got to be flexible enough to go anywhere and do what it takes to get through it. So. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. Because I knew that um that like from from the last two months of talking to people, I found that um so many lawyers had applied to different parts of Canada, which I thought was different. Like I thought um that if you were to apply to a school here in Ontario, that you would probably end up staying here in Ontario. So that's really good advice to hear if people do want to travel abroad and take that time to go out and actually explore what it's like to be on their own. Um, so that's really cool to hear. Thank you for that. Um, so I'm not sure if the two watching would have any questions. I will leave it open to anybody if there is any questions. Um, I don't really have anything else that I want to ask you. Thank you for taking the time. Um, I'm sure you've gone through it you've covered pretty much everything that I wanted to ask you. Um, so again, if there's anything else that you would like to address just for the last time, you can totally go ahead. Um, but if not, then thank you once again for taking the time out of your day. I, I don't wanna keep you too long. I know you're very busy. Um, so I'll end a little bit earlier than usual. <laughs> no problem. So thank you very much for having me. And uh, you know, if anybody has any question, you can feel free to, to contact me. 
uh, Suresh Law. My website is Suresh.Law and I'm on all the social media. So if, uh, if you're going through an application process or want to pick, your, pick my brains, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist. And thank you very much once again for having me as part of this. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to end the recording and then I will let you leave a little early.